hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jimaima today we are going to be talking about how to tailor your physiology questions in theory questions in exam and i'm going to use my physiology professional mbbs exam question paper to explain that by the way if you've not seen my video on how to answer physiology questions in exam please go and see it before watching this one so that you would understand what exactly is going on and if you've not seen my other videos in this same series i've finished with discussing my professional MBBS exam questions i'll leave the link up here and i have also finished with discussing my viva questions so if you've not seen that one too i'll leave the link up here with that said let's get on with the video for physiology they gave us six questions to answer five and number one a said write an essay on the metabolic actions of growth hormone now if you're faced with this kind of question they have asked you for metabolic actions don't go writing anything outside this you will just be wasting your time however there are some headings that are expected of you like you should write metabolic actions on lipids protein metabolism you know in the effects of growth hormone in protein, protein metabolism lipid metabolism carbohydrate metabolism and blah 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 you understand then when you write each of these headings you now write your explanation under this heading you know you need to put introduction okay they've asked you to write essay on the metabolic actions of this growth hormone you need to put a slight introduction what is growth hormone how is it synthesized where is, where is it synthesized what are its general actions generally what happens when it's too much what happens when it's not enough you, you get um just generally stop just chipping this tiny tiny stuff under your introduction so you'd give the lecturer an overview that i mean you have an idea of what growth hormone basically is because they've asked you to write an essay but the main thing that you should write should be um its effect on all these metabolisms that i've talked about and the uh, one b said describe briefly the uterine circle this one um it happens in different stages i think three stages if i'm not mistaken yeah Okay, this one happens in stages so list out the stages draw the diagrams for each stage if you can and then write what happens in each of these stages chronologically um, so um, take note of that um, that that was for 10 marks I answered this question thankfully <laughs> number two it said explain the functional organization of the cerebellum this one is um, or should I say straightforward probably or probably not that cerebral cerebellum stuff and all that so, so just list out the, the um, functional organization and what, write one or two things okay they actually said explain so you have to explain fully and if possible draw a diagram or draw diagrams um, then to be said explain the sequence of events that occur at a chemical synapse using the neuromuscular junction as an example so this one is a sequence of events i know what that means once you miss one stage that mark is gone so make sure you list I, I, what i usually do in stuff like this i list all the steps first then i now come and start explaining each of the step one by one so probably when the the examiner goes through your work and see that you've listed all the steps if the person has the time he would probably go through whatever you've written and give you your mark but sometimes they do not really have that time so they will just see that you have listed them up and assume that ah this person knows what is writing no need they give you your mark and move on to the next question so that's why i will always advise stuff like this that has sequence of events you list the steps the different headings and then go and explain each of these steps each of these headings one by one and if there are diagrams for it please draw the diagram thank you then 3a said a 300 level student of ae when i checked her first semester result okay checked her first semester result and was surprised shocked and sad because of the poor grades that she saw the student's blood pressure was checked at the time and was discovered to be 150 90 mmhg concerned classmates consoled the student on their way back to the hostel which took about 30 minutes Upon arrival, her blood pressure seemed to have returned back to 120-80 mmHg. Explain the possible blood pressure regulatory mechanisms that come into play in restoring the student's blood pressure back to normal. This one, I, I would say, is straightforward, not so straightforward. So all you need to do is, there are certain blood pressure regulatory me me mechanisms that you should have been taught. List them out list out just say something like um introduction 
say, just say a little um, st just say something short about the situation the student's blood pressure um, was this initially the student blood pressure was this after 30 minutes the student blood pressure reduced to this therefore the regulatory mechanisms that came into play include you list them after you finish listing these regulatory mechanisms you now come to explain how one by one under different headings so that's what i did anyway that's what i did and that's what i would suggest that you do because you can't go writing a very long paragraph these people may not have the time to read your paragraph so as much as it's within your power try to group whatever you're writing into different headings then number three b said describe the oxy hemoglobin dissociation curve now this question you must draw the graph there is a curve you have to draw it and write a slight introduction in sigmoid shaped this and this just write slight introduction about this Aussie hemoglobin dissociation curve draw the curve and then write short notes under it like describe this curve that you've drawn you get it is a relationship between this and this make sure you include it then when you finish writing all these stories at so so partial pressure of oxygen hemoglobin is so so percent saturated with oxygen you write like for 95 percent for 50 percent and i think 25 percent if i'm not mistaken you write each of them at this percentage the partial pressure of oxygen is so 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 and so so, so mmhd um, when you finish that write the factors that affect oxy hemoglobin um oxy hemoglobin dissociation curve what factors shift the curve to the right and what factors shift the curve to the left include that and um yeah that's it that's that's it then number four is said write on the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates now if you ask to write on digestion of carbohydrates introduction very important what are carbohydrates blah 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 just short, short, short stuff write shortly that carbohydrates um, where does it start where does it end short stuff that you can write in the introduction then you now said um the digestion of carbohydrate can be described under social headings you now start from mouth to stomach to um, do then you know you just write it down and describe how the digestion starts in the mouth the enzyme that's involved you describe how as it goes down to the stomach you describe how tyrolin cannot work salivary amylase cannot work in the stomach because of the ph and um, salivary amylase works under an alkaline ph but in the stomach because of the presence of hcl it is acidic and too acidic for salivary amylase to act on carbohydrates so digestion of carbohydrates do not occur in the stomach all right guys please come back tomorrow the last part of this video will be out i remain your girl jemima bye